Okay, so this is 40.4 C, and we're in example 7, the height of a model rocket. We're going to do a story problem that's very similar to example 6 that we just did with the pluses and the minuses, and just to give you a little bit more um, practice with that. H is the height, T is time, time has to be either 0 or greater than 0, it cannot be um, negative because it's in seconds. And what we're looking at is uh, during what time interval will the height of the rocket exceed 320 feet? Okay, so if we had this, I'm just going to kind of put a graph out here. And if we have a hyperbola that's like that, because this is negative, and between this and this, this is when the height is above 320 feet between this time period and this time period because again on the x-axis that's our that's our time so what we're looking for is the x value here and the x value here okay so anyway that's just kind of a real quick example there or a picture there that has um, an idea of what our answer is going to look like as far as if we were to graph it. So we've got this rocket being shot up into the sky and uh, we want to know at what time periods it's it's at 300 at least 320 feet. Okay so we have this formula that says negative 16 t squared plus 192 t that equals the height. <coughs> Okay, so the height needs to be greater than 320 feet. So that's what we're looking at. So let's go ahead, move everything to the left. And set it equal to 0 instead of that. Okay? All right, so once we do that, let's factor out 16. Okay, and then we're going to factor this to two binomials. I got a t here and a t there, and a minus two and a minus ten. So my t here is two, and my t here is ten. Okay, so what have I found? I found that um, my model rocket is. 320 feet somewhere between, or anywhere between 2 seconds and 10 seconds. So, in order to test this and make sure it's right, we've got t is 2. Uh, let's make these um, smaller since I don't have 10 on my graph. Let's do it half. Let's say that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so there's and we're looking at finding out if the graph, once it hits 2 seconds and 5 seconds, if it's this distance here, starting here and ending there, is beyond 320 for those. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our, two inter our three intervals here. Okay, so we're going to use this here. So t minus 2 is uh, negative here. It's positive here and positive there. Okay, when you put a number in for t. t minus 10 in the left furthest. It's negative because let's say we put negative 6 in. Negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16. So our answer is negative. Um, it's negative here. But it's positive here because any number bigger than 10 minus this 10 is going to give me a positive number. Alright, so when I multiply these two I'm going to get a positive here. I'm going to use blue here just so we can see. A negative here and a positive there when I multiply those. 
when I multiply that by negative 16. So what happens when I multiply a positive times this negative? I get a negative. What happens when I multiply a negative times negative? I get a positive. And what happens when I multiply this positive times this negative? I again get a negative. So I get my answer when I'm between 2 and and 10, which is what I discovered over here. So it's just kind of a way to check to make sure things are going according to plan, and it was a way for you to see again what goes on here with the positives and the negatives. And I know when I've taught this class, um, getting students ready for calculus, we went into a lot more detail on these, and don't know for sure whether this book will get us into all those details or not. But let's, let's keep plugging away and find out. Example 8. Now, example 8 I'm not going to do because that is using a graphing calculator. And uh, you can plug those numbers, follow the instructions there, and get your, your graph. Because that's what they're uh, looking for, is using a graph to find out the answer there. All right, so let's go to... Uh, power inequalities, which basically means exponents that are inequalities, and we're going to jump right into example number nine, and uh, see if we can get you moving on there. The future value of $3,000 invested for three years at radar compounded annually is given by this formula. Okay, what interest rate will give a future value of at least 36.30? So when I put this $3,000 in the bank for three years, I need to know what interest rate I will need to get so that at the end of the three years I have my $3,000 back plus another 630. So actually, my formula will be 3000 I'm trying a new pin here. It doesn't seem to be doing very well. is greater than or equal to 36.30. I want to make at least 3,630, or 630 to add to the 3,000 that I invested here. So, um, that was the question. What interest rate will give a future value of at least 36.30? So, therefore, I use that there. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We begin by solving this. Um, so we're going to make these equal to each other. I got my old pen back. Sometimes it's just not worth trying new stuff. Okay. Go ahead and divide both sides by 3,000. That goes away. And then we're going to take the cubed root. Cubed root. And we get 1 plus r equals a number, number similar to 1.0656 when we take the cubed root of that. All right, let's move things up a little bit. All right, so therefore r equals or is similar to, I mean, it's an estimate because our calculators don't go that we're just four decimal places over. So R equals that. This tells us that my rate is 0 0.056, which is 6.56%. So if I have an interest rate of 6.56%, um, I will be able to make at least $630 interest off my $3,000 and walk away with $3,600 and thirty dollars. Okay, so that's pretty much um, what we've got there and they've got a graph there that you can plug that into your calculator and figure out as well. Alright, so just the last problem we have here is example 10 and it has to do with absolute values and this is um, 
gosh, it's one of those things that if you don't use it, again, you follow the cliche of losing it. So you've got some things we need to follow here. So we're going to look at A, and we're going to solve these. All right, so when you have a less than sign, or in this case, a less than or equal to sign, you can rewrite this as Okay, so when the sign is a less than or equal to sign, you're going to write it this way. Okay, all that, all I did was took this and made it negative and put it on the left, made it positive, put it on the right. And then I solve for x. So I'm going to add 3 Okay, so I get that there. Keep going. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay, so I know that my value for x is somewhere between negative 1 and 4 and could be negative 1 and 4. Okay, so remember, when this is a less than or equal to sign... Take this number negative, take this number positive, and put this here in between without the rat or without the absolute value sign. If, like on B, we're going to switch the sign. Okay, we're going to do this different. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we're going to put the five on the right. and get is greater than 5. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, and I'm not explaining why this works. I mean, I guess I can if you really need to know. It's just dealing with absolute values. What we're going to do is we're going to go 3x plus 4 is less than negative 5, so we take this number, make it a negative, switch that sign. Or is greater than 5. So greater than the original. So we're not doing anything. So we rewrite it this way without the absolute value. We write it this way without the absolute value. Switch the sign, change the sign of the number on the right. Okay? And... Okay, divide by 3, divide by 3, x is less than negative 3. Okay, so I get that for an answer. So remember what I did. If it's a greater than sign, you move this number over, so we just have our absolute value over here. Then we write it as is. 3x plus 4 is greater than 5, one part, and then we write it as 3x plus 4 is less than, we switch the sign, and we change this to its opposite. Because remember, whatever is in here, whether it's positive or negative, when we take the absolute value of it, we get a positive. Okay, So that's why we have two different equations. One is if we put a negative in, we get a positive. One is if we put a positive in, we get a positive. So that's why that is written that way. And that's it for 4.4C.